we have with us Miss Michelle Weekly, one of the best people in the Bitcoin space. I'm just going to say it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all of you. We are going to open a BitBlock Boom pack. And I wanted to ask first, how is the conference going? How is BitBlock Boom treating you? BitBlock Boom is always amazing. It is treating me well. It's one of the best conferences every year, and I'm excited to be here. Love it. Okay, so quick game plan switch up, but tell me a little bit about Byte Federal and what you're doing and what, how everything is going over there. Sure, so I work for Byte Federal. We are one of the original Bitcoin ATM companies, and we just launched a merchant processing system. Uh, we've got a wallet that we're working on, and we are expanding globally, so there's a lot happening. How did that, how, how did you start working with them, I guess? What was that like? It's been awesome. And it's, it, there's a little bit of like, you know, the universe aligning in this story, actually, uh, as it kind of always is with Bitcoin. But I moved to Florida when I came back to the States in, in 2018, 2019. And one of the first things that happened is I saw a Bitcoin ATM. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And the gas station owner was like, yeah, they make them around here somewhere. And I spent years trying to find them. Nobody knew the name of the company. Nobody knew who was making them, where it was. And uh, it was a little bit of an OPSEC situation. And fast forward a few years later, I started tweeting. And that brought into my world the CTO of Byte Federal, who makes the machines, assembles them in Florida. We write all the code that runs them. Uh, and so I finally found him and spent a few months talking to him and now I work for them. So it's a pretty cool story actually. That's wild, that's wild, very cool. Doing, doing Bitcoin's work there, Satoshi's work. Yes. Very cool, okay, let's, let's see who we have in here. Right. We've already had Bob Burnett, I know, we've already okay. had Bob Burnett. All right. At some point, I know Michelle will be in these cards and who knows what the car is gonna look like, that's gonna be <laughs> wild. And we already had Bob pull his foil earlier. That's so awesome. it was very cool. We've already had something we haven't seen in a while. So did Jimmy just pull a Jimmy? Jimmy, I think we were walking out. Jimmy just pulled a Jimmy, but Jimmy, it was in the unconfiscatable pack though. Okay. So cool. it wasn't right. this pack because he's not, not a foil in this one. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what we've got. Let's see what we got in here, folks. All right. We'll do the first. We'll take the first couple off the top, and I'll walk you through it. And then we'll do the couple in the back, and then we'll try to do the foil last. We've had some people that were just like ripping the cards apart. They were very excited. You know, who can say, blame them? Who can blame like them? Be really careful. <laughs> okay, so we have we have the resources. resources. Cool. I like this one. Bear market. It's over. Tone vase Done. told us it's Done. over. We are officially in a bull market. Tone vase. Tone vase. Heard today. The having coming up. Oh. We're still on track for 420, guys. We are. Stay on track. I think it's going to happen. Ooh. Lightning Network. All Beautiful. of the Byte Federal ATMs are Lightning enabled. Beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. We're good. We're good. Max, Max. Kaiser. Legendary. Go All right. Did you see Max last week? Do you see them in El Salvador? Right? I was not at the having. Oh, that's right. You were yeah, there. I have right. seen them. Uh, that's right. I, I've been down there a lot, but I unfortunately didn't make the party. That's right. BTC Sessions. Mr. Ben. Classic. Classic. Oh. Ooh. Okay. I have to correct the record because this morning we did a Simply Bitcoin and somebody said, what is a cypherpunk? And I just totally, I mean, we were all still asleep. So a cypherpunk for the record, cypherpunk, cypherpunk's right code. Thank good you. Night last night. It was fun. Thank you. A lot of it networking. Was, yeah. Yes. Uh, stack, stack chain. chain. Nice. All right. I see you. I think we got one more. Yeah. Oh, ah, big, big Sean. Sean big Sean Harris. I haven't seen him in a few packs. Good to see you, Sean. All right. I think we, we only got? have. Oh, might be our it. Foil. Might be it. We what have. We have? Bob. Oh, Bob. Bob, where are you? Bob is currently on the panel. Oh, well, so sorry, Bob. The universe is aligning for Bob. He's probably saying really important it's things amazing. up there right now. And we're missing it. We're, we're missing, missing it because we're pulling yeah, the car. Yeah, sorry, Bob. Bob. We love you, though. I'm sorry. This is probably we're the sorry. only panel that I. <laughs> what do we do? Uh, what are what, we do, what am I having? What are we doing? It's we love you so much, Bob. Honestly, He's honestly, best. Bob One is amazing. We got Nico's gonna come crash the party Nico. over here. What is it? Number 122 of 250. Look at that. Is that the special one? Look at yeah, that. We got yep, Bob. Just got Bob. 
We got a bob. I added bigger doesn't bob. Nico is going to do his own pack here. Oh, I am? Yes. Okay. But I think in a new. Opti's busy. Thank you so much, Michelle. It we was love great. you. Oh, we, I love you I guys. You no, we are now done. We're we are wrapping up. Oh, okay. Okay. You rock. All right. Now we have Mr. Nico Moran, who runs Simply Bitcoin here, folks. We have the man, the myth, the legend. And we have a pack for him. But first off, how, Nico, how is everything going today? You guys have been all over the place, as usual, covering everything. How's everything going? Uh, it's been a great conference. I, I love Bitbox Boom. This is actually this venue uh, was the first time me and Opti met each other uh, in person. So this holds a very special place in my heart, Bitblock Boom, this awesome uh, conference. It's one of the smaller ones, but it's one of the... I love smaller ones. I love smaller conference. The, the big ones feel like Super Bowls. They're fun too, but uh, these, are, these are very special. And of course, you know, our boys over at uh, Bitcoin Trading Cards, you guys have been crushing it with these special editions for Pacific Bitcoin Unconfiscatable. And now... Uh, I heard about this. Alana was telling me the boomer packs for Bitblock Boom and, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, <laughs> the legendary Gary Leland. The, the, boomers, uh, the boomer of the boomer. The, the king boomer. The king Bitcoin boomer. What? So I love your guys' thoughts on this, too. I, like, I was just telling Surfer Jim, anyone really 50, you know, 60, 70, 80 and up, really I, I respect them so much because the humility you have to have in order to go your whole life and live a certain way only to then realize like maybe that wasn't the right way and be able to I respect those guys really more than anybody it's easier for us like we're younger you know we're in our 20s 30s 40s like it's easier those guys man like I just what are your what are your thoughts on that does I look at those guys as like real legends actually in the space in a way because of the humility it's Bitcoin's a humility test not an IQ test yeah I mean absolutely I think you 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 hit the nail on the head right the I, I would say look like someone like Larry Lapard, right? Uh, absolutely love Larry. And, you know, this guy's been thinking this way for a very long time. And, you know, he's a gold bug. And, I, I, and this is very, very um, sometimes maybe this is unpopular with Bitcoiners. I love physical gold. But the vast majority of gold that people buy is not physical. It's like in paper form, ETF form, whatever. Um, that allows it to be rehypothecated. That allows it to, it just gold's physical characteristics limit, limit its ability, right? Uh, that's where Bitcoin kind of comes in. And I think Larry like innately knew. Um, so a, lo a lot of these, you know, like I would say the ones that came from traditional finance, like Lavish and Foss, um, like, yeah, that was like a brain shift. You know, you come from the belly of the beast, the belly of the beast, so to speak. And you transition to becoming like it's like a reformed, you know, like you come through this reformation and it's extremely different um, because, you know, the younger generations, uh, you know, the 40 year olds, the 30 year olds, the 20 year olds, um, we're young enough where we, we haven't spent enough of our lives in the fiat matrix, so to speak. So in a way, our, our brains are still kind of like, oh, what is mo like, you know, like what is money in the first place? Whereas in them, you know. They, 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 it's almost as if they've had to like unlearn a bunch of things that they were taught about money in the first place. Um, and that's why it's, it's awesome to be a, a legendary Bitcoin boomer in, uh, in one of these uh, Bitcoin trading card packs. Amazing. And Nico was in the unconfiscatable packs as well. For anyone who hasn't seen those, check those out. While Nico's starting to open that, I would love to get your quick thoughts on the older generations and the respect you have for them, the humility. Yeah, I totally agree with you guys. I think, you know, the boomers, like you said, they've been around a lot longer. And to Nico's point about unlearning, you know, these guys, they didn't just come from nowhere either, right? They, they've they all been very successful in their own right and in their careers. And I think, in yeah, in fiat. And and that, that makes it even harder to unlearn the lessons, the fiat lessons, the fiat mindset, right? Because the more successful that you've been in fiat world, the more entrenched you are into that system. And so for these guys who have by all means, you know, by all measures been hugely successful to come and say, all right, hold up and to go through that process of learning about Bitcoin, unlearning everything that they have been entrenched in their entire life. I think that that is just beyond admirable. I, I love them so much. They're absolutely my favorite people in Bitcoin. 
it, make, it makes me think of the book, and you guys have both touched on this now, which is uh, Future Shock, the book from Melvin Toffler, I think it was 1970, and he said that, you know, paraphrasing, the successful people of the future will be the ones you can learn, unlearn, then relearn, Absolutely. you know? So I think that is Bitcoiners and these guys that we're talking about. So what do we, what do we have here, Nico? All right, I'm gonna go with the first one that was dropped on the floor. Um, <laughs> and uh, Michael Saylor. Now, it's really interesting about Michael Saylor is because like, I live in Miami, and Michael Saylor lives in Miami, and he sure does not live a boomer lifestyle. Um, so, you know, we got Michael Saylor first. Then uh, we got currency, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin life raft, and that looks like the Titanic, but instead of the Titanic, it's like, you know, like a, like a, like a government building. Uh, we got the, the bull market. I love the, the feeling, the touch of these. It's like you guys just want to emphasize the fact that boomers are old as fuck. Um, Extra paper. Um, we got gold, <laughs> which I was just talking about. Speak of the devil. We've got the white paper. Oh, we got the RIP how. Okay, we're going to go from the bottom. I still don't know what the foil card is yet, so I, I want to save that. I don't know. They're not really boomers, but I'll take it. Um, <laughs> Maybe they make content for boomers. Um, of course, we got the legendary Hal Finney. Um, rest in peace. Uh, you know, some people think that. Uh, you know, you know, you know. You, if you know, if you know, you know. Uh, we got this special, like, kind of black card. Very cool. That's the sticker card. Um, we got Sean Harris again. I don't know why he's in here, but uh, I guess he plays basketball for boomers. And and. Uh, we got Lisa. We we just had her. We had her on the live stream today, and the foil card is Bob Burnett. Oh, oh two Bob Bob with a triple. Oh, Bob! Look at you, Bob. Triple crown. Amazing, Bob. amazing. How so? In concluding here, how is the show going? I was simply doing here today with the news desk. Is it just mass chaos all the time, or is it is it just some buttoned up operation you guys have going on? Because you make it look pretty dang easy. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's organized chaos. So uh, if you do something every day, you get pretty good at it. Um, so from me and Opti's perspective, like we're just like holy shit, fucking up like left and right. Um, but from the viewer's perspective, what we hear all the time is like you guys are pros. So. Super like, professional. Uh, so like, like maybe I have no idea. Uh, we try to do our best. Uh, I pitched Gary on the idea of the news desk last year, and last year I actually had no idea what I was doing because uh, it was like in my head. Is that the first one you guys did ever last year? Here? No. So we had a trial run on a much smaller conference, and but it was like 25 percent of what we did last year. So like I had the confidence. And then I had an inkling of like something in my head that I think would look really cool if we managed to pull it off. And we had, and I had the technical know-how on how to do it on the back end, and the right, you know, uh, Murphy's incredible, which he does the video production for us on the conference side of things. So we showed up last year with all the equipment. Uh, I was literally like so nervous, I was like shaking. Um, and then it took us six to seven hours to set everything up, but we we managed to pull it off. And then it went flawlessly for two days, but we were on the news desk like nine hours, uh, or like it was like literally the entire day. And last year there was a lot more breaks, so there was like two breaks in the morning, an hour and a half lunch break, and then like two breaks in the afternoon. And the breaks is when you fill in the news desk, so you have to talk for an hour and a half and keep the audience entertained. Um, and then we send out runners to go get speakers and like all over the conference to kind of bring them in, right? That's the entertainment value. At least you need at least one A-lister on the desk or just people don't care. Um, and that was the, like kind of the theory of the case. This year, once Gary saw that like it worked out and it's whatever, like, you know, gave us a much better spot. And the conference is only one day this year. So it makes Opti, Opti's and I's job like 10 times easier. Uh, but, you know, this, this took off, this, this kind of concept. And uh, we did it on Confiscatable. And we're doing it at the Canadian Bitcoin Conference this year in May. So uh, I think that this style is just, you know, we're just getting started with this. Um, and uh, yeah, we're super grateful to be a part of it. And of course, 
you know, uh, our boys over at the Bitcoin Trading Cards, you guys do an amazing job kind of memorizing it in uh, uh, physical NFTs and ordinals uh, with these uh, BTC trading cards. So uh, appreciate it, Brandon. Uh, try not to blow up the blockchains. We're doing it in physical trading card fashion right here, boys and girls. R last thing really quick. What are, what are the big goals for Simply Bitcoin? Like, where do you see in the next, you know, year, next five years? Like, what are your goals going forward to, you know, for what you guys are doing, but also obviously educating and keeping the Bitcoin community together? What is what is your vision? Yeah, so, sorry, just checking if the stream's not done yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> minor, minor detail. Um, professional. So, so, um, so what, are, what are the goals for Simply? Um, so it went from a podcast to a... Um, it went from a podcast, no, sorry, it went from a hobby to a podcast. Um, and really the last six months, it's transitioned to a small media company. Uh, we're up to 12 people part-time and four people full-time. Um, I love what I do. Um, I worked at Swan, led their YouTube, helped build their YouTube machine. I was there for about a year. Um, I wanted the corporate experience and then I was like, okay, it's time to go independent uh, in January. Um, and what is my vision? I mean, I'm just going to keep doing what I love and I'm super privileged and happy to be able to make a living out of it. And it's super cool. It kind of like pays for all the trips and the expenses and all that stuff. And I get to make content with, uh, you know, my friends. Right. So it's, you know, hopefully we can uh, we can grow it to, you know, be one of the, uh, you know, one of the most well-respected media companies in, in Bitcoin. Currently, we're the most watched daily Bitcoin live show. We're very proud of that. We worked really hard, um, and yeah. So let's see, let's see where Bitcoin leads us. And uh, all I know is that we have a competitive, the we have an unfair advantage, and that unfair advantage is that we're on a Bitcoin standard. So our runway just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so yeah, I mean that's my take. Thank you, Nico. Thank you for being in the cards, saying yes to the cards. We appreciate both you guys so much spending your time. I know you've had an awesome time the last couple I had of days. A great time. <laughs> Thank you, guys.